Hi there, welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. We are episode 198. I am Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the US and I'm coming to you live from my home in Alpharetta, Georgia. So as you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from and we will get started momentarily. I'm gonna say hello to some folks. I know some of you were on early, welcome. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Elizabeth, Linda, Ananda, Enika, Tony. Hello. Welcome. Hi, Nancy, Patricia, Linda, and Janet, and Chris. Welcome. Happy Wednesday. Hi, Leah, Tilly, Myrtle, Wanda, Linda, Marlene. You guys are awesome. Welcome. I have a really fun, fun fold for you tonight. We're just going to do the one project because it's amazing <laughs> i'm excited to share it with you i am calling it i'll show you a sneak peek in a minute i'm calling it a hexagon twist pocket card so stay tuned for that welcome everybody hi myrtle hi jennifer michelle welcome welcome michelle from my home state of ohio i love me some fun folds too enica <laughs> hi christine hi betty amelia yay um, and this one looks complicated, but it is not. So I love those kinds of projects too. Hi, Maria. Hi, Patty. Aw, oh, thank you. Uh, let's see. We are streaming live to both YouTube and Facebook. I can see both of your comments. And we will do Prize Patrol at the end. If for some reason you're not going to be here till the end, you can leave hashtag Prize Patrol anytime. But I'll give you all the instructions at the end and we'll choose winners live. So um, the Prize Patrol is now for our live audience. Oh, sorry, Terry, that you couldn't find me. Hopefully it says I'm on Facebook. So hopefully I am still there. Well, I can see Facebook comments. So let's do a couple of. Oh, good, Enika. I'm glad I pronounced your name correctly. Sometimes I'm right. Sometimes I'm not. <laughs> A couple of housekeeping items. So the last chance items sale is or promotion is available now through June 30th. While supplies last, there are probably around eight or so items that have completely sold out already. So if there are still some things on your wish list from the outgoing January to June mini catalog, you want to make sure to snatch those up while you can. There are discounts up to 50% off. So that's a really awesome way to save a little bit of money on some of your favorites that you may not have added to your stash um, since January. And let's see, what else can I tell you? <laughs> my, um, let's see, my host code for the month is H-R-S-T-C-P-K-E. Please use this on orders with me under $150. If your order is $150 or more, don't apply the host code because you'll earn stamping rewards on orders of 150 or more. And if your order is $50 or more, I changed my graphic this week so you can still see my face. <laughs> Although now the live symbol is probably covering it. But orders of $50 or more get to choose a free gift from me, either tear and tape or the pretty flowers embossing folder or the simply elegant trim. So that's for orders of $50 or more. If you don't already have a demonstrator or you haven't ordered for me in a while and you'd like uh, current copies of our or <laughs> copies of our current catalogs, I can usually say that so much better on my YouTube videos, you can submit a catalog request at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. Let's see. I think that's it for housekeeping items. I'm going to flip the camera, show you two quick drawings from my kiddos. They always like to pick artwork to show you each live stream. So let's do that. I'm going to switch the camera, turn the picture and picture on. And we have got, so let's see, Nolan was practicing tracing. Nolan is my five-year-old son. So he was, they've got a lot of cool tracing templates. So he kind of did some of everything on his piece of paper. That's what he chose to show. And then this is a family that Lily drew. It's not our family. Is that what you understood when she explained the drawing? So is that a mommy and or are these all siblings? We're not sure. It's a mommy, a shorter dad, oh. big brother, little brother, and sister. I got brother, it. Big brother, little brother, and sister. I'm seeing three girls though. Anyways, it's fun. She's got a little stage off here mm -hmm. to the right too. And stars and a moon in the sky. Lily's eight. 
going into third grade. Oh my goodness. All right. You guys ready for the fun fold? I have it in an envelope right now because I want to show you that it will fit in one of our medium envelopes. We'll do a little surprise reveal here. So this is one of our medium envelopes. Stampin' Up! sells these. I love these envelopes. And here is our hexagon twist pocket card. We are using, and of course I didn't even mark the page. Somewhere, anyways. <laughs> I had the catalog out, but you know what happened? Oh, it's over there. One second. We're going to be using items from the hand penned suite and that's on page 104 to 105. So it's this suite. I absolutely love this designer series paper. Love the stamp set. We're actually not using the dies on this project, but if you're going to get the stamp set, get the dies bundled with it. You can save yourself 10% and the dies are beautiful coordinated with this stamp set as well. And let's see, really, really pretty colors that are in this suite of products. So that is the hand penned suite. If you want everything in the suite, it's $66.25. You'll get the stamp and die bundle, the designer series paper, and the beautiful genial gems, which I'm just getting ready to send out my customer thank you gifts from last month, but this is what the genial gems look like up close. Really, really pretty. All right, so let's jump into the project. And again, we'll do prize patrol at the end. We are gonna start with a piece of, oh, I didn't even show you what this looks like inside. Look at me just chatting away, jumping right into the project. So I've got a ribbon, sort of like a belly band, but here's what happens, you ready? Look at that. It's got three little tiny little note cards in there. I did not write on them, but I did a little bit of stamping. So it'll hold three, different note cards. I just did some light stamping. So you could put three little notes in there. I'm sure you could fit some money. I don't think that this will fit gift cards because it is, it's just wide enough, I think, for, you guys will have to try it. I didn't even think to try it with a gift card, but I was inspired by an origami fold and it was called a three card Monte Carlo. Does that sound like a card trick? I think so. It was all origami. You could fold and you know, you know how origami works, right? It's like the same scoring on opposite sides and all the paper tucks and you never need adhesive. I pixified it. I wanted to do a little bit of a larger size that would fit in an envelope. And then we're going to actually, there's no tucking and there's folding, but there's no tucking of, um, paper to get it to stay together. We're actually going to use tear and tape. So that is our little hexagon twist pocket card. This project is going to post to my blog on Friday's blog post with a picture of the template, the tutorial, all the supplies, etc. So make sure you visit the paperpixie.com on Friday. So we are going to start with a piece of blushing bride cardstock and this piece measures eight. I'm not sure which side is which, but eight and a quarter by eight and one eighth. So if you are in Europe and you've got A4 cardstock, you should still be able to make this project because eight and a quarter, well, you could make it with, if it was eight and a half, you just have to do it on the long side, but it's eight and a quarter by eight and an eighth. Let's bring in the Simply Scored, my absolute favorite tool. And on the eight and one eighth inch side, so that's the side that's just slightly shorter, Make sure you pay attention to, you know, they're, they're really close. So they're only an eighth of an inch off. So eight and a quarter, eight and an eighth. So on the eight and an eighth inch side, we are gonna score this at half an inch, two and seven eighths, five and a quarter, and seven and five eighths. Let me repeat those, half inch, two and seven eighths, five and a quarter, seven and five eighths. Then we're gonna rotate it to the eight and a quarter inch side and score at four and an eighth. Okay, so we just basically scored that right in half. Now let me show you the template. We are gonna do some diagonal folds here. Now again, this template will be on my blog on Friday. I'm gonna flip the cardstock because we actually want the straight folds 
to be mountain folds and the diagonal folds to be valley folds. So I like to flip my cardstock for that. And we're gonna kind of do this opposite. You, I don't know if you can, you probably can't see the lines, maybe a little bit. We're flipping it over and I'm sort of doing it, basically the template is what it's gonna look like when you're done doing the diagonal folds. But we do kind of have to do it opposite. So I am going to do, I think you've seen on my Simply Scored, I take a black Sharpie and I draw a line right down the six inch score line. And that's gonna help me do uh, the diagonal score lines. We can, though the online marker tabs for the scoreboard are not available for purchase anymore, Kathleen. Um, but there are, there's at least one person, I think, that sells them 3D printed. You might be able to find that on Etsy. I don't know the name or have the link, but maybe someone in the comments may know. So I'm gonna score, and this is gonna look like it's backwards because we're scoring on the opposite side of the cardstock, but basically we're scoring from this top corner diagonally down to this bottom corner, basically doing a diagonal score line right through this intersection. So what you want to do is line up that top score line. You can do this with the paper trimmer as well. And the bottom score line, you know, we're kind of going over a section. So let me do that score line first and bring it up to the camera. It's gonna be hard to see on the uh, Blushing Bride, but we went from this corner diagonally down to this corner. And then we're gonna shift over one and do the same thing and you'll be able to see it better once we fold and burnish. Again, the same diagonal, just shifting over a section. I know that's kind of hard to see those lines on this beautiful blushing bride. So now if I flip it over, maybe you can see it better there. Now this looks more like our template. There we go, trying to catch some shadow and some light there. Okay, so let's get this out of the way. Let's fold and burnish on the score lines. Now here's how we're gonna do this. The side that we scored the vertical and horizontal score lines, the score line made sort of a valley mark on there. We're gonna turn those into mountain folds. So I'm gonna fold the opposite direction. And again, that's those straight ones. I mean, they're all straight, but just not the diagonal ones yet. Okay, so we turn those into mountain folds and then the diagonal ones we're going to turn into valley folds. And you should have no problem folding those. Nothing should get in your way there. So you can kind of see how their diagonals are going backwards and you know, valley and straight or the <laughs> vertical and horizontal are mountains, okay? Now we are going to remove this top left section and this bottom right section. And we're doing that because, as you'll notice with these diagonal folds, the tab would fight with us if we tried to glue this tab to the diagonal fold. So as usual, there is a method to my madness. So we're going to, on the lower right side, I'm gonna cut up that first vertical score line, stopping at the first horizontal score line. Okay, we're gonna remove this section. I'm also coming in and just mitering on what's the tab that we're leaving behind, like so, okay? Then I'm gonna just rotate it 180 and we'll do the same thing. Now this is the lower right corner again, cutting up that score line. And again, just kind of mitering the tab section that we're leaving behind. Clean up the mess here, and now we should have something that matches the template. Okay. Now I'm just gonna show you kind of how this is gonna go together. We're gonna fold, we're gonna end up attaching these tabs, and then it's gonna naturally want to go 
into that hexagon because of the way that we folded those score lines. And that is creating those three really cool pockets. Okay, so now let's do some, let's do the adhesive, or sorry, let's do the designer series paper first. And I've got to look at mine so I can remember how to do that. All right, so the hand penned designer series paper. That's what this one looks like. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Lots of watercolor, watercolor washes. This one, the first one here is my favorite pattern. So I've got three pieces of that. I have one piece that measures two and a quarter by four. And because this is directional, it's in a landscape pattern. And then I have two pieces that are two and a quarter but by three and seven eighths. And these are also in landscape. So I'm going to actually, did I click? I clicked my mouse by accident. There we go. <laughs> okay, um, we're gonna cut these on the diagonal. So let's do that really quick. And you're gonna wanna go from the top left, I'm looking at my thing here, top left to lower right. So all I do on the paper trimmer is line up those corners in the cutting groove. So top left, lower right, and cut those on the diagonal. So you're gonna end up with two pieces like so. We're gonna do the same thing, top left to lower right of the pattern. Like that, okay? All right, now I'm gonna turn it this way. So we've got our tab here in the upper left and I'm gonna take this full piece, the one that was two and a quarter by four, and we're gonna adhere that to this panel. So let me get my liquid glue wherever I put that. <laughs> I found it. <laughs> Sometimes I get myself too organized and then I forget where I put stuff. Which, speaking of which, I have a funny story to tell from this week. I can laugh about it now. I was not laughing about it on Friday, was I? My husband, Brian, is watching for your comments. I forgot to introduce him. He's looking for your questions, and he'll pop those up on the screen. Uh, so Friday morning, let's see. I take the kids to daycare in the morning, and I could not find my car key. Nowhere to be found. It was not where I normally put it had no recollection of moving it. You know how that goes, right? So I took my husband's truck, which the kids were laughing at me and I was laughing at myself because I'm not really a truck driver, but <laughs> it's not really a big truck, but I feel it's just not my normal car that I drive. So <laughs> as I'm talking, I'm gonna also do the DSP. So we're gonna do these two. Just watch what I'm doing and then I'll show you again. Um, anyways, I got back home the whole time I was dropping the kids off at school. Brian's he's ransacking the house trying to find the key for me. He didn't have any luck. So he went upstairs to get ready for the day. And I was like, oh, well, I have my other key fob, but it doesn't work in the car anymore. Um, I don't know what happened. It's like not programmed for the car anymore, but it has the little physical key in it. So I'm like, okay, maybe I don't know how I would have done this, but maybe I locked my other key fob in that car. So I pulled the physical key out, opened my car. Some of you may know what happened next. The alarm went off and I had absolutely no way to turn my car alarm off. So it was like, I call, I'm calling Brian cause he's upstairs. I don't have time to run up there cause the car alarm's going off. <laughs> I'm like, I need your help. Well, he comes down. I'm trying to open the hood. I was gonna start pulling cords. Like how do I turn my car alarm off? Anyways. Um, <laughs> it went off after three minutes, but it was the longest three minutes of my life. And I'm sure my neighbors weren't happy with me. Any tips if using directional paper? Yes, Mary. So you want to make sure that you, if it's directional, you want to cut it in landscape, okay, versus portrait. And that will help you um, with the way that this is situated. Anyways, long story short, our cleaning people came the day before and I decided to clean up really quick and I put my car key in my craft tool drawer. Totally forgot I did that. It was not with my wallet. So anyways, <laughs> it was fun. All right. So 
I'm showing you this way. This is kind of where it's folded. This is how we put the papers on this side. I'm gonna flip this over. I'm just paying, making sure I get this right here. And these are going to go in these panels. Okay, so let's do liquid glue for that. So I probably should get that extra key fixed. Maybe that would probably be a good idea. <laughs> oh goodness. It was a good thing I didn't start pulling cords, right honey? <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to pop my hood. I knew how to pop my hood in my 1987 Dodge Caravan that I learned how to drive in and had to pop that hood often. You'd think after having this car since 2014 that I would know. So yeah, I'd be helpless on the side of the road. That's what would happen. All right, so this is sort of the orientation that we do the designer series paper. This tab up at the left, this tab down at the bottom in this direction. Now these two pieces are gonna look like they're upside down, but that is for a reason. And then I'm gonna grab tear and tape and we're gonna run that along our tabs here. And I'm going right up to the score line as opposed to the edge of the cardstock. Could use liquid glue for these as well. And I'm at the very end of my tear and tape. All right, so we're gonna remove the backing. And then we're gonna fold this in half, okay? But we're gonna fold these tabs in as I do that. As you stick to the tear and tape, we're gonna press that down. Again, you could use liquid glue for this as well, okay? So we've got those attached. This is how it's going to go together. And as you play with it a little bit, it'll naturally want to go in that orientation. You just wanna make sure, obviously, so our diagonal folds fold in, our horizontal and vertical fold out, and then you've got this really cool, it's kind of hard to see, but there are three pockets that are in there. Okay, so that's the basics of the hexagon twist pocket card. Let's create our inserts and then we will decorate the front. Really simple decoration because it is a fun, fancy fold. So I didn't want to take away from that. I've got three pieces of Misty Moonlight cardstock and these are cut to two and a quarter by four. And three pieces of basic white that are cut to two by three and three quarters. So we're gonna do a little bit of stamping on these. You've got three um, real estate areas to write a little note in this pocket twist card or twist pocket card. <laughs> so I'm going to use three different floral stamps for this. I'm going to grab my square grid paper that's for the uh, from the Stamparatus but I love to use that for stamping off because it doesn't take up that much space. And I will show you the stamp set. Here's the set, hand penned petals, and we're gonna use these beautiful flowers. All right, let's do pool party first. And this one is actually so light that we don't need to stamp it off. I'm just gonna put this sort of in the lower right corner of the basic white for a really pretty watercolor effect. Our stamps make it so easy for those like me who are watercolor challenged. Now we've got Highland Heather, and I'm gonna stamp this one off because my Highland Heather is extra juicy. And we'll put that in the lower right corner of this piece. Pretty. And then finally, Blushing Bride for this cute little pair of flowers. Do the lower right and then the upper left. Something simple but gives you space to write. And you could even write over the flowers because they're such pretty subtle colors. All right, we're gonna use liquid glue and adhere that to the Misty Moonlight pieces. Oh, 
There we go. Almost put the glue on the Misty Moonlight piece. And this is a great project that you can use any of our stamps or bundles with. Have fun with it. This will be really fun for like a birthday card. All right, so then what we can do is slip these little note cards in. So we've got this front pocket. We have this middle pocket, which sort of appears after you've started to fold this. It's gonna kind of go between the front and the back diagonal. I think you can see that here, hopefully. So behind this diagonal and in front of this diagonal. And then this one will fit just right in the back, like so. You sometimes have to make sure that middle one is in the right spot as you fold it closed. Cute. All right, so let's do, let's tie the ribbon. That's gonna kinda hold it closed for us. Grabbing my third pair of hands, my reverse tweezers here. And then this is the Highland Heather Grow Grain Ribbon. Can you see how pretty this stuff is? It's got a little bit of a sparkle to it. I love Highland Heather is my favorite Stampin' Up color. So, how's it look on camera? Good. Do you have a gift card that you can check in? Um, let me see my library card. Let's check that. Or something that doesn't have a number on it. Let's see. Yeah, let's do my library card. Ooh, it does work. So it's going to be, you, what you might want to do is stick it to a piece of cardstock because it's, this section is taller. So for example, you could do a piece of cardstock and stick it to there with like a glue dot or something and put a gift card on one of those panels. So yes, it will fit. I think you can see that. Ooh, good. I'm glad I checked that. So let me measure this really quick. I don't know where I put my ruler, but I want to say that these are, so two and an eighth, that's right, two and an eighth by three and three eighths is the size of a normal gift card, and yes, that will fit. Yay! That makes me even happier. <laughs> All right. So we're going to use the ribbon to kind of hold this in place. It doesn't need, I mean, in the envelope, it will stay closed as well. So I'm going to tie this kind of off to the left a bit. Grab my reverse tweezers here as my third hand. Okay, now we'll zhuzh our little bow here. Get that knot a little bit tighter. The thicker, or I should say the wider ribbons, you usually have to mess with a little bit more. At least that's my experience. All right, let's get those ends trimmed. And then we're just going to do a quick sentiment from this stamp set. Got a giant scrap of basic white for some reason. <laughs> and the thanks sentiment from hand penned petals. I'm going to stamp this one in memento tuxedo black ink. And then we're going to punch that out with the double oval punch. And 
And you could always cut a strip that is, let's see, how wide would it need to be? I don't know, cut a strip about an inch and a half or so, and then you can stamp a bunch of thanks and punch without having this extra uh, scalloped oval punching out. I'm gonna need that, hold on. And then a scrap of Misty Moonlight. We can bring that down. It's easier to punch the scalloped oval without a lot of waste. So liquid glue on the back of thanks. You guys have been mesmerized tonight. Not a lot of questions, huh? <laughs> All right, and then dimensionals. Just gonna do a trio of those. And then we can pop this up in this lower right section. And I desperately missed using bling last week. So we're gonna use it tonight. Just gonna grab one of the larger rhinestones and just place that down. So there we have our hexagon twist pocket card. So let me show you how that goes again, like so. I love the way this looks with the diagonal designer series paper when it's open. That's a really cool pocket card. So fun, now we can fit a gift card in there. Now we know we can fit a gift card. Cash is always good too, and lots of fun little notes as well. You could even put uh, little photos in there. Lots of fun things. It's a little bit like a mini album. So there we go. That's using the hand-penned suite of products. Love the way that turned out. So yay! All right, let's jump into the scoop for Prize Patrol. We're gonna go share, thank you guys. Uh, let's see, okay, Prize Patrol. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> All right, so US residents only. Let me flip the camera here. You can enter to win by putting in hashtag Prize Patrol in the comments, both YouTube and Facebook, wherever you're watching from. I will choose two winners. And the prize for tonight is a handmade card for my stash, which you haven't seen this before. Uh, I made this for my In Color Club cards, but I haven't posted to my blog yet. But the Back on Your Feet stamp set. So that is what is up for grabs tonight. We're going to choose two winners. I am going to go ahead and share my screen. Let's add to stream. Switch to that, hashtag prize patrol. I'm gonna let y'all enter for a little bit. Again, just a reminder, don't miss out on the outgoing items from the mini catalog. Um, June 30th is the last day, but items are selling out. So grab the things you want before they're gone. And I feel like I'm missing some promotions. Um, Paper Pumpkin, you have until the 10th of July to subscribe for that. I think that's it. I can't, I cannot think of other things. We just finished a promotion on Monday. That was the Connect, Craft, and Collect. And I think that's it. I'm having a brain fart right now. <laughs> Ready? You have a question. Maybe explain that you might not see your name, but that doesn't mean you're not. Oh, yes. So I've had some questions about our prize patrol. You, you will... Not, you will not see, you will not necessarily see your name on the screen. It's completely random. Everybody has a chance who enters, but it will not show everybody's name. It's sort of like spinning the wheel and then wherever it stops, um, it will, that will be the winner. And what else? Uh, you can type in prize patrol as many, hashtag prize patrol as many times as you want, but you will still get one entry. <laughs> so I think... Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off the screen. I'm gonna draw our first winner, okay? So go ahead and draw. I'm gonna grab my marker here. I love seeing familiar names. 
Cindy Oswald, congratulations. Writing down your name. All right, congrats. I love the confetti and it's in my favorite purple color, purple. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna draw the next winner. Congratulations, Cindy. I love when it slows down. Who's it gonna be? Renee Solano, congratulations. Writing names down so I do not forget. Yay, congratulations. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing that. Let's go back to here. To claim your prize patrol, Cindy and Renee, you want to visit the paperpixie.com slash prize patrol. And when you claim it, I'll get your goodies in the mail to you. Thank you for joining me live. I will be live again next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for episode 199. Getting closer to 200. Anyways, thank you all so much for joining me. Have a wonderful and blessed week. Check my website, thepaperpixie.com on Friday for all the details about tonight's project. And I hope you have a wonderful and blessed weekend and happy Father's Day. Take care. I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.